There were 13 traffic lights from Loveland University to Central Boulevard. The steamed beef dumplings and the scallion noodles combo at Delicioso was a favorite among the employees of the cosmetic department at Verdant Plaza. And the warm-hearted staff of the milk tea shop at Catalpa Alley were provided delivery men with free water. Ah, how I miss the time when I used to deliver takeout. Every day I could visit different places and meet different people. Aries. I read the name softly and sighed deeply. Sure enough, whoever ran into him was indeed unlucky. At Black Swan, there was a rigid hierarchy. Some people were superior, while others were just ordinary. Unfortunately, I was the latter. After being inducted into the organization by Hades, I realized that I was not a monster, and that I no longer needed to feel inferior. Hades gave me my new life, so it was only fair for me to serve him. These past few years, I had been working as a delivery man, monitoring the whole city for the organization while living a relatively normal life. But I knew it wouldn't be so peaceful all the time. I just didn't expect it to be this way. I'd always remember the way Ares looked at me so maliciously that day. In the dark, he answered coldly without thinking. No need. A clamor arose, irritating as flies. I was to be the security guard for Professor Lucian's residential community and secretly provide Hades with information? I had no interest in this kind of work. I didn't think that Ares would allow the organization to keep tabs on him. I was under the impression that he was a fearsome and mysterious being. My intuition told me that the dread he inspired was a result of his penchant for cruelty. Hades laughed abruptly in the hall. Ares, the man I recommend is definitely qualified. Do you not trust my man, or do you not trust me? The piercing sound of a ring knocking against the metal seat rang from above, clearly revealing the mood of the ring's owner. In the end, I became the security guard for Professor Lucian's residential community. My life as a security guard was probably the most ordinary, leisurely time I ever had. Every morning, I would sit in the community garden, Bask in the sun and watch the elderly practice Tai Chi. After seeing Ares leave, I would buy breakfast at the gate. Ares' life was very monotonous. And except for his time spent with a girl known as the Queen, he was usually alone. He went alone to theaters and even to bars. It really seemed that he had no friends. This didn't surprise me at all. It would be strange if people like Ares could even have friends. Occasionally, when our eyes met, would politely greet Lucian, and he would nod back with a pleasant smile. This often led me to wonder if Ares and Lucian were really two different people. His superb acting was admirable. It was the same with the Queen. She would always smile and greet me with a good morning and thank you for your hard work. She seemed to be a kind and modest girl, and I was inclined to believe that this was her nature. Kindness and innocence are the two most difficult qualities to disguise. Unfortunately, she fell for Ares. Finally, there was progress. I switched shifts with my colleague and followed Ares and the Queen to the aquarium. Pretending to be a tourist, I followed the flow of the crowd with my eyes firmly fixed on the two people ahead of me. Actually, there was nothing much to report, as Ares played the role of Lucy flawlessly. In front of the queen, he was always polite and charming and would never do anything that could expose him. Even Hades once said half-jokingly that Ares would make a perfect womanizer. As I was daydreaming, Ares seemed to notice that something was off and looked back vigilantly. I immediately hid in the corner. However, the queen didn't notice anything, as Lucian had her full attention. I couldn't help but admire Ares, who was such an accomplished man. I was afraid Ares was already on to me, so I slowed down and began to distance myself from them. I purposely waited for them to stop before I moved in again. In the rest area, Ares was carefully placing the sleeping girl in the chair. But in that moment, his usual serious face was glowing with warmth. I couldn't believe my eyes. Shocked, 
found consciously craned forward just as Ares slowly turned around. My heart jolted. Come out. I stepped forward and glanced at the sleeping girl. Ares smiled slightly, but his eyes were cold. His icy glare chilled me to the bone, so I quickly looked away. After I was caught spying on him that time, I began to avoid direct communication with Ares. His aggressiveness made me feel very uncomfortable. I was lucky that I didn't work for him directly. Occasionally, we would run into each other in the community. I would subconsciously avert my eyes. One evening, while on the night shift, I was eating takeout and checking my phone, when the elevator alarm suddenly went off. I glanced at the surveillance mode and was stunned. The queen was trapped in the elevator, looking a little panicked. She was holding up her phone, trying to find a signal. After consoling her a little, I decided to repair it myself. After all, the queen was to be Ares' prey, and if anything bad happened to her, Ares might blame me. I took the key and opened the elevator. Before I could comfort her, a familiar voice came from behind. I'll take care of it from now on. Thank you. It's Ares. Oh no, this is Lucian. I rushed here after I got your call. It's all right. Lucian gently patted the queen on her back, whispering to her softly. Looking at their interlocked hands, I smiled unconsciously. Maybe in this lifetime, I could witness Ares fairy battle. As he was leaving, Professor Lucian smiled at me. Mr. Security, please contact the relevant department. I hope this will not happen again. Staring after them, I hesitated. Should I report my speculations? Regarding the changes in Ares and those possible variables? But, in the end, those were just my personal conjectures. Before I could make a decision, the situation progressed beyond my expectations. I will never forget the blood streaming from Ares' right eye. Although I didn't know what happened that night, my intuition told me that Ares was deviating from the plan. Hades seemed surprised as well. With mixed feelings, he shook his head and nodded. Seeing Ares wipe away the blood on his face and walk expressionless into the darkness, Hades smiled meaningfully, and I understood. Hades gave me an order to continue to monitor Ares and the Queen, not for the organization, but for him personally. He said he had a hunch that this would either be the best time to cooperate with Ares, or the best time to get rid of him. But secretly, I felt that Hades was too optimistic. One day, while sitting in the security room, I realized in hindsight that I had not seen Ares for three days. Suspicious, I knocked at his door. No one answered. Just as I was about to report this abnormality to Hades, the neighbor's door opened slowly. The queen looked at me with a complex look. She probably expected to see Lucian instead, so she must have been disappointed. I stepped closer and tried to fish for some information. Where did Professor Lucian go? I haven't seen him for days. Anything happened to him? He rarely leaves home for so long. Has there been an accident? When I mentioned accident, she trembled slightly and quickly shook her head. She quietly said, I'm sorry, and then closed the door. It was very likely that, as per the rumors, she had learned Lucian's secret. I suddenly found myself sympathizing with the queen. She was just an ordinary girl, betrayed by the man who she trusted most. It must be horrible. As projected, flu spread across the city. With my mask on, I looked at the pedestrians hurrying along the road, somehow feeling that this world was kind of boring. Hades once said that there was always a price to pay for a better future. To be honest, I didn't mind paying whatever price. Evolution has always been accompanied by elimination. I just personally hope that this boring life wouldn't last too long. So when Professor Lucian held a grand press conference. I thought our plan would finally come to fruition. 
I just didn't expect that Ares would dare to protect the Queen to this extent. But I shouldn't have been surprised, actually. No one would believe that Ares was the man he used to be after seeing how the two of them were with each other. Finally, when Hades said he only wants Ares' partnership or his disappearance, I saw Ares' eyes flash and a calm smile spread across his face. How could he still smile under such circumstances? I shivered as a trace of fear sent chills up my spine. Hades was still laughing insolently, jeering at Ares and the Queen who were in a desperate situation. The ferocious look on his face betrayed that he had been waiting for this day for a long time. But in my heart, I felt an ominous premonition. Ares held the girl tightly in his arms, protecting her from danger. The ground under their feet cracked, and flames emerged from below. Hades ordered me to capture the queen. I moved forward, wanting the battle to end as soon as possible. However, amid the flashes of light, my vision of the world slowly split, overlapped continuously, like an endless nightmare on the edge of hell. I remembered Ares' voice, light, distant, and full of contempt. <laughs> you think the weak spots I let you see are really weak spots? I suddenly understood. But just when did Ares set the trap? This world was so boring that it disgusted me. Day after day, I didn't even want to open my eyes to see the repeating and overlapping dreams. The nebula changing endlessly above us. Here, there was no alternating between day and night, only piercing silence and desolation. He stood at the open space, staring intently into the distance. There seemed to be a door, faintly glowing with white light. I think we'll be out soon.